Hello, David Harper, Bionic Turtle, with a brief look at the expected return on a loan for FRM candidates. This is from Anthony Saunders on individual loan risk. And the formula we care about is right here. It says the expected return on the loan is equal to the probability of repayment, denoted by P, multiplied by 1 plus K, where K is the contractually promised return on the loan and we subtract one so for example if P the probability of repayment is 96 percent so that means there's a four percent chance of default and K the contractually promised return is nine percent then we can use this formula to calculate the expected return on the loan that gives accounts for the default risk and it's going to be equal to P, the probability of repayment, multiplied by 1 plus K, the contractually promised return, minus 1. And in this case, 4% is the expected return on the loan, and that is adjusting for or giving or accounting for the default risk in the loan. Notice it's not 96% multiplied by 9%. That would be 8.6%, and that's not the answer here. The answer is 4.6%. To relate this to regulatory and economic capital, consider that the loan, just like a portfolio of credits, has some expectation of default. So the average level of de expected defaults is the expected losses, and those we expect will be covered by the provision for loan losses, a contra asset account on the balance sheet. So the expected losses are a cost of doing business. Beyond that are the unexpected losses. And so we typically say the economic capital is equal to the difference between the unexpected losses and the expected losses, which are the cost of doing business and are already covered by loan loss provisions. To illustrate, I can take that same loan with a probability of repayment of 96%. That means 1 minus 96% or 4% is the probability of default. And let's just imagine that we have 100 of those loans in a credit portfolio. And to keep it simple, they are independent. There's no dependency structure and they're the same size. If that were true, I could use the binomial distribution to characterize the probability of a number of defaults and losses in my credit portfolio. And because 4% is my expected default, on average I expect 4 defaults in the portfolio, and so I would cover that with expected losses. Of course, I could have more than 4, and those would be unexpected losses, and I would typically decide with some level of confidence over some horizon how far I wanted to cover the unexpected losses and then my unexpected losses minus my expected losses or this gap here would be covered by economic capital. So one other thing before I finish and that is according to Anthony Saunders as he illustrates there is a trade-off here and what we mean is there is a relationship between the promised return, that's our K, and the probability of repayment, that's our P. According to Anthony Saunders, these are not independent. And this makes sense. Here, again, I've just illustrated imaginary numbers. If I take the promised return on the loan and just escalate it here and go all the way up to 15%, that represents increasingly risky or higher yield loans. As we increase the promised return and seek out those riskier loans, naturally the probability of repayment is going to decline. So it makes some sense intuitively that there's a relationship between the promised return and the probability of repayment. Just with those numbers, if I calculate the expected return for each of them, I get this plot here, it looks a lot like Anthony Saunders, and we can see that beyond some point here where the expected return peaks at oh, about six and a half percent, 
then the expected loan return starts to decline and I'm into diminishing returns. That's because these loans are riskier and riskier and the expected level of default is offsetting the higher level of return. So that's a bit on the expected return on the loan. This is David Harper, The Bionic Turtle. Thanks for your time.